Hey guys, so today's video is to teach you Steel's official tuning method for all of their two-stroke equipment across the board. Whether it be old, whether it be new, whether it be a chainsaw, leaf blower, whippersnipper, hedge cutter, it doesn't matter. They use this process and it's what they've taught both in their instruction manuals and their literature through to actually teaching the mechanics themselves. What I'm going to do is do top-down views, side views, laying over the audio and also speaking over so that you can really see what's going on, how the process occurs, how the engine responds to adjustments and at the end if you've still got any questions just leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those as well. But hopefully this video is going to clear up any questions that you might have about the process. It's going to streamline the process and by it being the official steel method you can't really question it. And it's been going on for two decades now, over 20 years actually, so it clearly works. So if the piece of equipment that you're tuning has an attachment on it, in this case we've got the chainsaw, the chain must be correctly tensioned, it must be sharp. If you're working with a whipper snipper, the line must be extended to the correct length. It's all important to load the engine up correctly. The air filter must be clean. The fuel filter must be clean. There mustn't be any blockages in the carb and the fuel tank must be full. The first step, is to set your carburetor adjustment screws to the manufacturer's recommendation. These can be found either located on the piece of equipment itself, and if it's not, you can go into the service manual and it will tell you how many turns out from lightly seated. Still call this their base settings in their literature, and it's the first step to their tuning process. The next step is to start the engine and to warm it up for one minute, varying the throttle. And if your machine is not idling correctly, it can't hold an idle, they recommend you adjust what they call the LA screw, the idle speed screw, until it does idle smoothly. From here, they want you to adjust your idle speed screw to spec plus 500 RPM. Spec is the number that they recommend in the service manual that the machine should idle at. In this case, we're going to go to 2000 500 and therefore we need to add 500 rpm to that which is 3000 rpm so i'm going to adjust the la screw the idle screw to 3000 rpm on the low speed screw opening it and closing it until we find the fastest rpm This idle speed setting must be at spec plus 500. The spec is 2500. We add the 500 RPM on top of that, which gives us the 3000. And then if the engine is running faster or slower than 3000, we then need to adjust the idle speed screw to get it back to that point. From here, you want to retest that lean drop off, rich drop off. So, adjust the screw in or out and make sure that it's no higher than spec plus 500. From here we then need to go back to the L speed screw, the low speed screw, and we need to open that out by 500 rpm to bring that idle down. So you may be wondering why Still has such a complicated or what might appear a really complicated process to tuning their equipment. What they're aiming to do is to set the butterfly between the idle drilling and the first progressive idle drilling. And the only way you can do this is with the low speed screw. The location of that butterfly is there because it gives you the best idle properties and the best off idle properties. The next step is to tune the high speed side of the carburetor. This affects fuel supply at full throttle or what still would often call max RPM. You look into your service manual. On the first few pages, you will see it will give you a idle speed and a max speed RPM. Hold the tachometer next to the high tension lead and see what it's reading. If it's reading below that number, then you want to lean 
that mixture screw out. Turn it in, turn it to the right. If it's above that number, they want you to reduce that RPM to bring it back down within specification. My advice and recommendation is to always stay 500 or so RPM below that maximum speed. This gives you a buffer zone so that should the diaphragm become hard, the fuel filter become slightly blocked or the fuel be slightly stale, you're not running at the peak performance of the engine because then you're going to be running it slightly lean, it's not getting enough fuel supply and there is a chance over time that you can cause damage to the engine. Airing on the side of caution, being slightly richer, offering the machine more fuel is going to keep it running cooler and it's much safer for the engine. That is the still procedure for setting the carburetors on all of their two strokes. I hope it's helped. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Leave me a comment in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts and until next time, I'll catch you very soon.